a recap of you know the things that caught her heart the things that were learned you know from the previous I want you to identify, you know, you can raise your hand and then I'll, you'll be given the um, the audience too. So anybody that would like to give a feedback of what he or she learned, you know, from the previous training, uh, Kiss the Super Natural, Joyful Thanksgiving. We don't have time, so um, I'm expecting to see hands already. Except you want me to start calling out names. I can see our names and I can call anybody. With the permission of Ralph Perry, of course. Anybody at all? Ah, wow. I'm not seeing anybody's handle. Ralph Perry, please, is it? Can I, can I call anybody? All right. All right. So I've been giving a go ahead. So, um, Sister Inda, please. I would like to hear from you and um, your feedback from the previous training, you know, what you learned, the things that you can still record, the things that that got to you, things that you know stood out for you during the training and the last special training and, and special training. Yes. Please, Ma, you have the floor. Hello, Sister Winda. Yes, 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 I can hear you. I'm sorry. Right. Good evening, sir. Good evening, everyone. Okay, so what I learned, so what stuck with me from the last three years, um, about the fact that if um the substance that we got did not produce joy in our hearts, it's just um a wishful thinking. So when we, because um, joyful Thanksgiving is like it was said, the operation of the supernatural is not complete without the force of joy. So whatever it is that we are confessing, whatever it is that we have gotten, if we have not meditated enough to be joyful about it, then we are just, you know, wishing in our heart that this thing should be. So when we get the, um, the substance, when we receive the word and meditate on it, it should produce joy. It should give joy to our hearts. So that is when we can actually see the manifestation of what we are, what we have meditated upon. And we were also taught about the uh, manifestation of joy. So when we get the substance and we are meditating, it must produce singing. So, you know, when you are meditating and then all of a sudden you're just singing, praising the Lord and you're just laughing, like people are wondering, yeah, and you're just dancing around, you're just shouting. It's because you've, you've caught something, you know, something has been revealed to you from the substance that God has given to you. So if it has not gotten to that level, whatever it is that we are, you know, desiring about is just wishful. So the substance must produce joy in our hearts thank you Sam. all right ma thank you very much ma thank you very much um that was that was that was really really a lot and you know you've opened the floor now so i believe some people have courage now to speak up so if you want to talk now i would like to see your hands what were the things that you know that you now remember from what she has said <laughs> you know that stood out for you in the previous special trainings you know um the minister said a lot yes he said a lot and we should have grasped a lot because he even said he said you were prepared for that message so we should have you know we should have gathered a lot from what he said so i want i want another person before i randomly call another person i want someone to volunteer i want a volunteer to you know speak up what did you learn what was the things what were the things that stood out for you you know, in the previous training. Anybody? Hmm, I'll call again. All right. Um, Sister Inola, please. Let's have you. I'm very sorry, sir. I was not in the 
last training and I've not been able to listen to that. Oh, okay, okay. All right. All right. Um, bro Peter, let's have you please. Hello, sir, bro Peter. Bro Peter, can you hear me, sir? Yes, sir. I can hear you, sir. Okay. Okay. The thing is, I will, I will, I know we are just, we are done yet, so. Okay. All right. All right. All right, sir. I'm, I'm to speak on the last training, right? Hello, sir. Can we hear me, sir? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The things that stood up for you, feedbacks. All right, sir. Well, the thing is, I just need to talk to I'm all over the place, but I would, I would just come down and say something. So, I think the last, the last training was um, joyful Thanksgiving. Um, the keys to be supernatural and um, or, or the Holy Spirit bring to my remembrance the things I learned. All right, so I. I I remembered Brockwell touched on two laws before even getting to his main message. And those two laws were very important um, themes for me. I, I, the laws of conversion. That um, of conversion and the law of manifestation. And uh, one thing that really stood out for me is that Meditation is that bridge, is that way I can, is that key to the law of conversion, how you convert things, how you don't, I think he, he made, he, he gave an example of, you can give back to, there is something called fibroid, that of course the same way a woman can um, be pregnant for nine months and give back to a bouncy baby boy or baby girl, a good kid, a person can also give back to fibroid, a child that is not well developed, things like that. So that it's important that we don't just give back to things anyhow. It's important that we take time. And at yeah, least we right. get, we obtain substance of whatever we want to get and we program it into our consciousness. So I think I got that. And also the law of manifestation. To really see that there is a, there is a, there is a, I'm sorry I'm on the call. So, all right. I'm coming. All right. So, please, I'm very sorry. I mean, I just finished the program. That's why I'm. Just all over the place. But also the law of manifestation and to really see that there is, there is obedience is very important. I think it, it touched on obedience and joyful thanksgiving being keys to the laws of manifestation. So I, I for now, I think those are the things I, I, I remember from the last last training, last training as I said, but of course, of course Brockway touched on a lot and uh, I, I remember, of course, there was the effect of joy too, because at least that was the major thing that would be um, that would, that the training was all about joy. How and I, I, I remember he, there was one quote from there is a he posted, and for us to really see that at the end, when you get the substance from something, there is a way it's, you get, you have joy. There is a way you you do, you do things with thanksgiving. That joy is an important part of our faith as believers. That. You don't, you don't, you don't, you don't go through life with with more mourning, with complaining that there is a, there is a, there is a, there is this joy that comes with faith, and when you have substance for something. So I, I think I remember, I remember that too. I remember that too. So for now, those are the, and of course, getting substance for something, and substance is whatever God tells you. It is the Rema word of God. So I'm very sorry. I'm just all over the place. But those are some of the things I remember from the last training. Thank you. Thank you, sir. All right, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, just as I said, um, Brother Kwemi spoke about, you know, two laws, the convertive or uh, 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 transformative law and then the manifestation law. You know, and I I also remember, now let me, let me, I, I, I can't say I was totally into the message that day, but I actually had to go and listen to the recording again. And, you know, Bro Kwame actually started off with, you know, the intention of God's plan for us again, you know, starting from the beginning, the eternal purpose, where he said it is the initial and the 
ultimate pla plan of God. That eternal purpose is the initial and the ultimate purpose of God. And you see, we human humans are at the center of it. And it made mention of something concerning the convert and um, restore and um, the transformative role now. He said, he said, and um, if I remember quite well, that um, this this plan, you know, kick started with the word of God and it has continued on the word of God. I now said, you know, if we are to live supernatural, if we are to live perfect, you know, we would have to live by the word of God. We have to, he, he spoke something, uh, he spoke about the taming of our tongue. You know, a man who is going to live perfect must be able to what, to control the things that he say. You know, you would know a spiritual person by what he says. And it is not when he's preaching that, you know, you pay attention to what he's saying. He says those things he says when he's under pressure, where he need the, an illustration of, you know, when you wear wet and white and then one car passes by and splashes water on you. What are the things that will come out of that tongue of yours? You know, that is where you, you get to, under, to know who a spiritual person is, who have taken this tongue, who have decided to, you know, to live from the inside out by the word of God, not by the circumstances around, not by the external conditions around him, but he has been able to what to focus on God's word, you know, to transform him that word that he will turn to, um, you know, that God has given him. Uh, so that that is that's one of the things I I was able to hold on to, to from the record and then you know into the manifestation and you know the keys are and the Keys of um, you know joyful thanksgiving where I said dancing he gave us an, illust an illustration of you know um he, he experiencing you know the 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 supernatural yeah you know joyful thanksgiving when he said there was a project and then he went to his room in its year to dance and he was sweating without without earpiece without this that without that and you know God turned I, I don't want to say God turned up, like God turned up, no, but you get what I'm trying to say. It was actually a a supernatural event that occurred. And, you know, he said they're singing, uh, where he said we should try to form big boy, we should dance, play before the Lord, just as David said he would continually do. We should continue to play before the Lord. He said, um, he mentioned shouting, yes, and laughing, yes, because laughing puts the enemies into confusion. You know, when they say you can't do certain things and then you just laugh hard, you laugh hard. You know, you laugh from a standpoint of peace when you know what you are carrying inside, what you are pregnant of. Hallelujah. So uh, that are some of the things that, you know, I was able to hold out, you know, that I was able to hold on to from the teachings. Uh, I would li I'd like to say that, you know, Bro, Penny has always he has continually spoken about um, about feedbacks, about uh, recaps, like giving feedbacks to messages in no small way. So it's it's for our own benefits, as he has always said. So it is in our best interest that you know we we continually listen, so that you know we can get more and more out of the things we learn bi-weekly, You know, in our special trainings, it is not just attend Sunday special training and then till the next special training and then till the next special training no. these things are for our own benefit so it will be in our best interest that you know we pay much more attention to this so uh with no further ado uh i'll be inviting the minister for today to bless us with god's word that is um the person of the Olabodi. Okay, me, please can we give him a round of applause for the languages? Let us welcome him big time. You're welcome, sir. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Can you hear me? I'm so happy to be with us. Yes, yes, sir, we can, sir. All right. Okay. <clears throat> Sorry about my voice. Um, I don't know. Yeah. It's I don't know, but just bear with me, okay? Um, so I'm very, very happy. I'm very happy to be with everyone um, today. Uh, God has so blessed us. He has really blessed us. He has great plans for us um, as a house, 
as individuals, as a generation, God has so, so great plans for us. And everyone who, you know, submits to him, everyone who comes to him, everyone who um, responds to him and responds to the hands that God uses to mold men, all right, um, they will all turn out uh, perfect, or turn out um, stable, turn out as mighty men, all right, that can um, step into destiny, you know. And I said something yesterday at um, Teenagers in the Upper Room, uh, Teenagers in the Upper Room. Um, okay, so Teenagers in the Upper Room is a program we have, um, for now it's been quarterly, a uh, program we have where um, teenagers pray in the spirit for three hours stretch, all right, at the builder's home. Okay, so so we're speaking yesterday, and I said there's a difference between teaching and training. In teaching, information, knowledge, or understanding is being passed across to you. In training, you are taken through it. Okay, mm -hmm. and and that's why it's very important for us. Sorry about that. Okay, that's why it's very important for us to pay solid attention attention and to respond so the training is not training is not just listening to it training is putting it to use all right so everyone who pays attention to putting to use what you are learning you will find yourself being trained the training is not the hearing of it the training is in the practice of it all right and that you are getting results on your own i remember we were i mean um so yesterday Okay, so another thing we ask them to do during Sinjas in the Parham, I'm sure you saw it in the flyer, is that they should invite their friends or you know people that are not baptized in the Holy Ghost can also come. And and yesterday we counted six people that were not yet baptized in the Holy Spirit. And then we had we had about we had about, I'm not sure, but not less than 10 people, not less than 10 teenagers that have been taught and trained how to baptize other teenagers in the Spirit or the Holy Spirit. They have done it They have done it in their school after they've been taught. They were able to successfully, you know, pray for their friends in school, you know, their area, and they administer the Holy Spirit to them. Why they put to use the teaching that's what the training is right and then we had a very beautiful um picture yesterday likewise so i'm sure when the pictures come out you would see it um so we had a teenager who wants to receive the holy spirit one of the six and then we have another teenager who has received the holy spirit but has not that has but has not uh, administered the baptism of the holy spirit to, to anyone before and then we have a supervisor Another teenager who has received the Holy Spirit has been trained, all right, and has also been able to successfully administer the Holy Spirit to another person, now supervising another teenager to administer the Holy Spirit to another teenager. All right, so we had, you know, them in threes, and we didn't have enough, you know, people to administer the Holy Spirit to. Right, because you have so many people that were willing or they were they were trained, all right. And we thank God for you know 100 percent success, okay, for all of them yesterday. So why did I say all of that story? I said it because there's no point, okay. Teaching is a tool, teaching is a vehicle, all right, for us to come into an experience, all right. Um through productivity let me see that or let's say an experience of productivity but you cannot experience productivity if you do not put the teaching to use and that's the whole essence of what training is you're blessed all right so let's get started father in the name of jesus i thank you for this time we give you praise we give you glory thank you for your word thank you for that which you've prepared for us we ask oh god that by the power of your spirit every heart open to listening to me right now whether you're here in person in this meeting or you're going to listen to this recording or watch this recording i ask oh god that your eyes are open to see lord according to your word let every eyes see in the name of jesus let every heart be established by grace 
in the name of Jesus. I ask, O oh God, that my words come forth with clarity, simplicity, and yet with power in the name of Jesus. And I rebuke every spirit, I rebuke every demonic force, so that the word can go forth unhindered in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God forevermore. All right, so one final thing, please, before we start, I'm going to check check the uh, the platform, the community. There's a there's a message there. There's a post that I want us to you know just forward that, just repost it, or you could just copy the text. The text is most most is more important. All right, um, about you know how your friends and everyone can join this meeting. I'm sure you don't want to enjoy this alone. Okay, so just follow that and then get back into this uh, place. All right. So today we're going to be wrapping up uh, the series on the keys to, you know, walking the supernatural, the keys to the supernatural, the keys to being, all right, and operating the supernatural. Very, very powerful things we've been looking at since we started out on the subject. Because this year, it's a year of the supernatural. Hallelujah for a moment. And we started out by looking at the foundations of the supernatural, all right? We, and then we began to look at the keys of supernatural. We looked at the altar, we looked at order, we looked at meditation, right? Uh, we looked at joyful thanksgiving, and finally we looked. We are looking at obedience today, all right, as a key to the supernatural so what i'm going to attempt to do today because we are wrapping up is i'm going to i'm going to try my best to go very fast all right but at the same time i'm, I'm going to try to go very very simple but just stay with me okay so that we can you can grab this and then also you know make it a habit to go back to recordings don't assume that you got everything okay so i'm going to try to you know draw a straight line all right from the very first you know topic we had on the supernaturals all right up to today's uh session or today's lesson okay i mean that's a huge work to do within the short time that i have but i'll try my best by the grace of god hallelujah okay so the the key we're looking at today is obedience obedience now the way i'm going to start is this I wanted to write this, okay? The supernatural is the birthright of every child of God. I wanted to write that down. The supernatural is the birthright of every child of God. In other words, a birthright is not something you worked for. A birthright is the reality you are born into. It is something that is made, you know, was made available for you, something that was instituted before you were born for your benefit. Do you get that now? So the supernatural, all right, is an experience, all right, that we have access to by grace because of the sovereign will of God. In other words, nobody can, you know, coerce God to to bring us into the supernatural. No one can coerce God to bring us the supernatural. No one can force God or no one could force God to make us supernatural. It's not possible. Now, that same way, none of us, none of us can make God, all right, um, can make God release the supernatural through our lives. So the supernatural is the product of the sovereign will of God. And it was God's decision that every child of his, or let me say this way, it was God's decision that the human race, humankind, all right, will be his image. Now, what is an image? An image is an exact representation or expression of an object. So when you have a real object or you as a real object, you stand before your mirror in your house. Let's say this morning, you know, this Sunday morning, you look very beautiful, right? Very handsome. So I say, hush up, right? You look very beautiful to church, very handsome to church. But how did that happen? You did not just assume, all right, that you were good. You put, 
well for most of us right some of us do use mirrors all right so you 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 stood in front of your mirror and you are the real object but your image was inside the mirror are you with me now and what you see in the image is a reflection of who you are now whatever you can do your image can do you are the one who empowers your image and so your image is a reflection of your wisdom your image is a reflection of your likeness do you get what we're talking about now so the angels of god are not the image of god they are not in his image nothing is in the image of god except human beings so god chose in his sovereign will that human beings will be his image all right and what that means is that god can then begin to express his will within the mirror so god is in his own realm we are in the realm of creation we are in we are in the earth are we together now god is in his own realm but every human is in is in the earth so the creation is the mirror of the will of god god stands in his own realm and then god begins to express his mind god express his thoughts into the creation through his image through man and every expression of god through man in the image is what is known as the supernatural so the supernatural is bringing realities of god from his realm and expressing it into the earth so the supernatural doesn't the supernatural is not just the spectacular the spectacular is you know things that must attract people like let's say fire is born in a bush right but the bush is not being consumed now that's the spectacular um another example of the spectacular is that let's say that you know someone okay let me give you an example um samson went to the gate of a city samson with his hands removed the gates of the city I, I did not say the door there are some doors right of some buildings that even two people cannot carry just an ordinary door two men ft men cannot carry just simple doors right cannot lift them now samson goes to the gates of a city pulls it out right places it on his neck and then he does not carry it he does not drag it right downhill he lifts it and he's taking it up the hill and takes it to the top of the mountain do you see that now that's the spectacular okay so the spectacular is always supernatural let me say that way permit me to say that way but the supernatural is not always spectacular the spectacular is always super is always supernatural the supernaturals even through wisdom you are operating by the wisdom of god people cannot really you know see the spectacular nature of of things but for over that issue you are operating in the supernatural so you don't have to is as simple as in god's realm god is thinking about reaching you know uh blind people with vision are you with me now and then god rubs that on your mind remember we looked at this uh the 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 eternal pyramid mirroring the four faces of god if you remember that series okay if you don't you can go back to the archive you'll find them there okay so god shines his face upon our face and we get to see what the supernatural is and then we can now express that into the earth okay and everyone who is born of god has the seed of god has the nature of god right and we can do right what god can do in that sense as god does it through us do you get it now so it's not that we are doing something What the will and to do of his good pleasure. That is what doing the supernatural, that's what it means. Okay, so I just wanted to, you know, uh, lay that foundation because. Now I wanted to write this down as a second thing. So the first thing I said is that the supernatural is the birthright of every child of God. Number two, I want to write this down. One major ingredient one major ingredient with which man is often brought to perfection is pressure 
<laughs> you may be wondering now ah, where, where, where are we going how did we get the pressure don't worry don't worry okay one major ingredient with which man is brought to perfection is pressure again there's a there's a training we've had how to handle seasons seasons of great prayer all right how to handle seasons of great pressure you can take a look at that um you can pay attention to that training too it will bless you a lot now we're going to start our reading bible reading today from james chapter 1 and verse 2 quickly james 1 and verse 2 we have a long way to go but i will i will try my best and god will help me tonight james 1 and verse 2 now he says my brethren count it all joy when ye fall into diverse temptations knowing this that the trying of your faith works patience but let patience have a perfect work that ye may be perfect and entire wanting nothing in other words there is a trying of your faith that is required for you to come into perfection without the trying of your faith you remain as a baby there are five metrics all right for spiritual maturity there are five symbols or five you know path five uh, ingredients that make up for spiritual maturity number one is divine revelation through the teaching of the word okay number two is private discipline in other words on your own so teachings you have to be taught all right a part of what's going on now to be to to be spiritually mature you have to be taught you have to read books you have to you understand that now you have to go through you know knowledge in that sense number two is private discipline on your hood you have to sit with the word on your hood you have to pray on your hood you have to fast okay you have to have a private discipline without private discipline it doesn't matter even if you have the greatest teacher you will not mature because the mature ones are those who through use have their senses exercised do you understand that now so there's private discipline number three is personal ministry in other words you have to be serving with what you are learning if you are not serving with what you're learning you, you cannot mature as a believer number four is providential relationships in other words god will bring people into your lives it's part of your maturity god is going to bring teachers right mentors spiritual parents people that will you know forge and help you do you understand now god will bring you you know like-minded people at your own level so there are people that are ahead of you right the upstream relationships and then there are people that are you know like your lateral relationships your people your your circle people you can call yourselves you know let's pray together let's do three hours together let's do five hours together let's do two hours together let's just pray let's build capacity oh i was reading these scriptures and this light came to me can we take a look at it have you seen it before what do you think about it god will bring us into providential relationships god will also bring us all right into relationships where we have to mentor the younger ones and we're going to learn from them and then in the process of pouring into them we will also mature do you understand now because there's a way you can talk to yourself that you cannot talk to other people and you're going to learn that maturity through that okay and the fifth one is <laughs> hey glory to god that one divine circumstances let me put it like that divine circumstances that's number five ingredients of spiritual maturity in other words know how know how you will get to a situations where intentionally it's like god himself sets it up for you now in some cases it's the devil that is trying to do stuff in your life he's trying to delay you you know everybody is moving on with life everybody is succeeding but you're not succeeding right in that sense it looks like you're not succeeding but it's a circumstance or you know circumstances that that are arranged for you to for you to thrive for you to put into it all the things you've been learning all right and without that circumstance you cannot some of you if i ask you can you talk about moments where your 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 faith was boosted because you got into a circumstance where where you knew that if god did not show up 
that's the end and then god showed up and what he did was he strengthened your conviction for another example if god would teach someone patience the way you would teach patience is by dealing with someone who is impatient all right god gives you a roommate that is impatient god gives you parents that are selfish that's how you learn love you know god gives you someone that you understand that? so there has to be circumstances so that same way when it comes to our perfection all right in the supernatural our perfection pressure is very important now look at i'm going to read common english bible a version now common english bible all right you can put that in the uh, comment section for people to read please my brothers and sisters think of the various tests i wanted to underline tests you encounter as occasions for joy don't forget what we're doing i want to draw a straight line all right from everything we've been learning and just you know uh, combine everything compress everything into a sizable you know capsule that you can take and you know just know that you have everything so it says, think of the various tests you encounter as occasions for joy. In other words, when you have those tests, what it's it's an occasion for you to release your joy. In other words, last time we learned about joyful thanksgiving. The power of joy is released when you are rejoicing against all odds. If you are rejoicing because there's food on your table, that's idolatry. That's not, do you get that? In other words, you are releasing joy because of external things. That external thing is now has now become an idol that is bringing forth joy out of your life. Okay? So when you have that pressure, that test, that is the opportunity for you to release your joy. Okay? He says, after all, he says, after all, you know that the testing of your faith. All right, thank you very much. Okay, okay, we don't have it. All right, come on, English Bible. C E B. He says, you know that the testing of your faith produces endurance. Now, this is how perfection comes. When your faith is being tested, all right, what is happening is that it is to produce endurance in you all right now he now says this let this endurance complete its work so that you may be fully mature complete and lacking in nothing so that you may be fully mature be fully mature now let me say this and I, i've taught it before i just want to say it again to emphasize it <clears throat> you can do the supernatural because you are first supernatural the believer can walk in the supernatural because he is first supernatural you cannot do the supernatural without being supernatural you cannot do the supernatural without being supernatural okay in other words uh, the fruits all right as supernatural things that come out of your life but the tree is responsible for the fruit you must become supernatural now the process it's a process and that's why we're talking about this here be fully mature be fully complete all right lacking in nothing but we cannot get to, to that state that tree state where the fruit we are bringing forth consistently which is, you know, releasing the supernatural. We cannot get to that state without endurance, okay? And endurance is a product of test. For instance, um, the way an athlete builds endurance is by being subjected to extremes. You keep running, you keep running, you feel tired, but you keep at it, all right? You feel tired, but against all odds, you are not responding to the external you are responding to an internal vision in other words you have an internal vision who for the joy that was said before there's an internal vision he endured the cross are you following what i'm saying now you you forsake everything going on externally your your legs are aching you know everybody is succeeding people have gone ahead of you you understand that now 
you fo- you leave your focus off that you focus on the picture that god has given to you internal image within you all right and you begin to rejoice at that and that's how you build endurance and as you build endurance in other words you are living with someone all right you're living with someone at home but and it's like it's almost like you are you are experiencing hell do you understand now you don't keep your eyes on that you keep your eye on your internal vision okay and you will find out that as you keep your eye on it there will be a change that will go on inside you and you start maturing you start maturing you start maturing until you are as that's at that state where the bible says be fruitful okay i'm still gonna come back there later look at another another version here easy to read version okay easy to read version James chapter 1 and verse 4 is the to read version. It says this. It says, so you should continue to trust God all the time. Then you will become stronger as a believer. You will become complete. You will become completely how you should be. In other words, as you rejoice when tests and trials come to you, all right. Now we're still going to look at why do tests and trials come. Because I'm still going to get there. Okay. Now, so as you rejoice and doing that, you you are trusting God. It says you will become stronger as a believer, and then you will become completely how you should be. You will not need anything more. Okay. That is the importance of pressure in the supernatural. Now, the song that I want us to look at here, look at Matthew chapter 13. We're going to, it's, a, it's a long read. It's the parable of the sower, and I want to show you the connection between endurance, between the word of God. Okay, when I say the word of God, I'm talking about the substance, right? The substance of the supernatural you desire. Okay, now, so that's the word. So the connection between the word, meditation, pressure, okay, endurance um if you respond properly to pressure what will happen if you don't respond properly what will happen and fruitfulness we just want to see all of that within this particular passage now matthew chapter 13 all right from verse 3 we're going to start from verse 3 and we're going to verse 21. now he says this and he, he spake many things unto them in parables saying behold a sower went forth to sow and when he sowed some seeds fell by the wayside and the fowls came and devoured them up some fell upon sto- stony places where they had not much earth and forthwith they sprung up because they had no deepness of earth excuse me please okay because they had no deepness of earth and when the sun was up they were scorched because they had not because they had no root they withered away, all right? He says, and some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprung up and choked them. He says, but others fell into good ground and brought forth food, some a hundred fold, some sixty fold, some thirty fold. And it says in verse nine, he who, it says, who at hears to hear, let him hear. Let him hear. He says, and the, and the disciples came and said unto him, why speakest thou unto them in parables? And he answered and said unto them, Because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. Are we together? Okay. So now let's jump um, to verse 16. It is, But blessed are your eyes for the see, and your ears for the hear. For verily I say unto you, that many prophets and righteous men have desired to see those things which you see, and have not seen them, and to hear those things which hear, we hear, and have not heard them. Here you there for the prayer of Zohar. Now, at this point, I want you to pay a lot of attention, all right, so that you can see this passage in the light of how the supernatural is birthed. Okay? Verse 18. Here you there for the prayer of the Sower. Verse 19. It says, When anyone heareth the word of the kingdom and understandeth it not, then cometh the wicked one and catcheth away that which was sown in his heart that this is he which receives seed by the wayside now what is seed seed is the promise of the future seed is the potential are we together now so 
when God gives you the substance for the desire, it is that seed form. We've taught that before, right? So you can go back. You know, if, if this is your first time on this series, please, I, I beseech you, I plead with you, go back, all right, and, and start learning, okay? So that you can, you know, get everything together. But you still be blessed today, but there are some things that you will get better, all right, when you revisit the, those teachings. So God will plant the seed. So someone can be waiting on God for a desire and God gives that person a seed, the substance. But you see, if that person does not understand it, the person does not comprehend it, okay? That's all. That's the end of that process. Okay? Good. Now, the second one, this which is where we're really going. Verse 20. It says, but he that received the seed into stony places. Now, this person received the substance that is responsible for that manifestation. Now, let me give an example because of those, let me, for those that are joining us, for, 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 uh, for example. Now, if someone desires the supernatural, which is, say for instance, divine health, now that is the result, that is the fruit of supernatural. That's your desire, for instance, okay? Now, that's the external condition that you want in your life, even though that is already your position in christ that's your internal position in the realm of the spirit the position is that by the stripes of jesus you were healed where okay? it took away all the sins the same way it took away all sicknesses that's your reality that's the reality of every child of god are we together now but the fact that is your reality does not mean it will automatically become your external condition there's a process so the first thing is that you must get the substance the substance all right that will produce that external condition so the first question what is the substance that will produce the external condition called divine healing or divine health where you don't even fall sick at all right in the earth finding that substance now that substance could be derived from say for instance matthew chapter 8 verse 17 where it says that according to what is written by isaiah's prophet isaiah that he himself took our infirmities now that is substance do you understand now? So that is what God will plant in your heart. That is the seed, all right, that you will receive into your heart. Now, if a believer does not even understand that as a substance that is responsible for divine health or divine healing, that person cannot experience supernatural as far. So every time we go to church, all right, we are what what the Holy Spirit wants to give to us is substance, seeds. God does not give fruits in that sense even when it gives you fruit is the seed that he is actually giving you but god does not give fruit he's seed he gives All right okay particularly when he's dealing with his children anyway let me let me um let me put that close there are we together now okay so in this parable all right the second category received the substance received the seed all right into the heart but there's a mistake they made here the mistake is this he says he received either he says he uh, verse 20 either received the seed into stony places the same as either hear the word so he heard it and anon with joy received it now what does it mean to, to receive with joy in other words as he started thinking about it meditating upon it he was joyful all right the word produced joy in his heart he was joyful about the word okay but he did not do it for long he just the first experience of joy, he now launched out and began to act on it externally. Okay? So he says, yet he had not root in himself, but endured for a while. You see the word endure, where we're coming from, right? He doesn't have endurance. He endured for a while. Okay? He says, for when tribulation or persecution arises, it's not if, it is when. In other words, one of the proofs that you are operating or you are in the supernatural on any issue, that God will express the supernatural in your life on any issue, one of the proofs is that there will be tribulation in that direction. There will be trial in that direction. There will be pressure in that direction. You know, you receive the promise from God, which is the substance. The promise God has given you is the substance for that external reality that will happen in your life, that manifestation. Are we together now? Now, immediately just start expecting tests start expecting trials start expecting persecution as you rejoice at that word are we together now okay so he says for when 
not if, when tribulation or persecution arises because of the word. Everybody say, because of the word. Say it again, say, because of the word. So it will come because of the seed you have received, because of the substance you received. Okay? It says, by and by, he is offended. And when you enter into offense, that's the end of supernatural. Forget about it. So you start getting offended at the wrong person. Okay? You don't recognize that it is a test. You are living with someone. God has given you a promise. All right? A great promise that is going to push so and so and so out of your life. You are going to touch many generations. You are going to raise many generations. It will bring through your life stories that will touch, that will change the lives of people. Practically, it will change the life of addicts to become strong for God. That's the supernatural. And do you understand? Supernatural, as I said, supernatural does not, does not just mean spectacular. The supernatural is that the thoughts and the realities of God are being experienced within creation. That's the supernatural. In other words, you are superimposing the realities of God upon the realm of creation. That's the supernatural. Okay? So it is the flow out of the power of God. It is also the flow out of the wisdom of God. It is also the flow out of the character of God to touch the lives of men. That's the supernatural. Are we together now? In other words, when you are walking in love, you are living the supernatural life. That's exactly what I'm saying. Amen. Glory to God. So God has given you all those promises. He has given you all those promises. He has, and then you are you are set on that. All right. And then the devil comes, all right, through someone, and the devil gives you a slap or just a pat on your back and all that. And the goal of it is to change your direction away from what you are looking at. For you to start looking at the wrong person, and you get offended at that person, and you lose out. All right, on what God has given to you. Because when you enter into offense, all right, you enter into darkness. Offense is the easiest way to become blind. The realm, I mean, the realm of the prophetic, that's why everyone who is called into the prophetic, you must beware of offense. That's why Jesus said about John the Baptist, all right, blessed is he that is not offended in me. The moment John the Baptist entered into offense, he, he started doubting. His sight, his sight became poor. I, is, are you the one or we should expect another Jesus? Are we together now? So when you enter into offense, you are you are hungry at your parents, you are hungry at the person you are living, you are hungry at your boss, you are hungry at your leader, you are hungry at everybody, you are offended. You are affecting your sight. It's going to, it's going to affect your internal programming. And the internal condition is what will, is what will produce the external condition. Let's come back because of time. I really want to stay with the time today. Okay? So it says, by and by is offended. Are we together? Glory to God forever. Now, I want to write this down. The supernatural is being fruitful. So I think you saw what I was trying to show you. Okay? In other words, you want the supernatural. God, the sower being God, will come with a substance, which is the seed. God will give you a promise. God will show you something in the scripture as the title deed, as the substance of your faith. Are we together now? All right? And he's going to plant that. Now, when you receive that into your heart, it's going to produce a level of joy in you at first. Now, that is not the point for you to launch out. Okay? That's not the point for you to launch out. Because as far as that word is concerned, you don't have endurance. As far as that word is concerned, you don't have endurance. You have to, you have to keep meditating over it. All right, and I'm going to get there. I don't want to go ahead of myself. You have to keep meditating over it, and as you meditate over it, your joy will increase. Remember, it says the joy of the Lord is our strength. So that endurance is a function of the level of joy you have gotten into as far as that matter is concerned that's why you must be active about your joy in dancing in singing all right you have to rejoice now you have not seen the external result but you have seen the promise of god you've gotten the promise of god so you rejoice at the promise of god glory to god you rejoice and when your joy is full all right there's strength okay and what you want to do is that before the sun will come, because the heat, all right, of the, the persecution, the trials, the tribulation is coming from the sun, you need it. 
Are we together now? You need it because the sun that produces light for photosynthesis is also the sun that produces heat that can scorch it. So two things are coming from the sun, light for photosynthesis, but it's also bringing heat. So we need persecutions, we need tribulation, we need tests, we need pressure. Are we together? Pressure must be applied. Okay? So, but the joy will be your strength. So you want to keep your joy level up. And you want to ensure that nobody, no offense, can bring down your joy level. Are we together now? This is very important. It's extremely important. Okay? And as you do that, all right, you are receiving, you're, you're, you're bringing in the seed, all right, into your earth. When I mean your earth, your heart, right? Very well and much and more through meditation. And as you meditate, when as your joy is full and you begin to, you know, shoot forth, Okay, in obedience now, you now start producing fruits, 30 fold, 60 fold, 100 fold. Glory to God forever. So I wanted to write this down. Okay, the supernatural is being fruitful. The supernatural is being fruitful. Okay, and this involves the application of fire. The supernatural is being fruitful. And this involves the application of fire. In other words, God told us at the beginning, be fruitful, multiply. I'm still going to get there. Okay, but it requires application of fire. And that's what we've just seen now. Okay, there has to be an application of fire. Okay, the sun will come. All right. If your seed was properly planted, your joy level was properly, you know, dealt with and you had strength, by the time you start germinating in manifestation and external things, in obedience and external activities and all that, you know, when you are working out that vision, you're working out that which God has planted in you, by the time you start doing that, okay, and offenses start coming and all that, it will not distract you, it won't disturb you. In fact, it will catapult you. Okay? Glory to God forevermore. So I want to establish this once again, that there are two foundations for the supernatural, okay? And they are this. Number one, the word of life. Two foundations for the supernatural, the word of life, and number two, communion with God by the Holy Spirit. As my Apostle Paul said, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, the intimacy of the Holy Spirit. Are we together now? So there has to be communion. Those are the two foundations upon which we can release the supernatural. Experiencing and expressing the supernatural without these two, all right, is a is a sham. It's fake. It's not correct. That's not the divine order. Why? Because it says in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. The word logos, that is the logic of God. That is the sum total of all the thoughts of God. All right? All the intentions of God. Okay? All the behavior of God. Do you understand now? That's the logic. The logos is the word of God. So you cannot produce anything outside of what is contained in the word of God because we are the image within God's mirror. Okay? So we cannot produce anything within the mirror than what is in the thoughts of God. Okay, to do that is rebellion, that's not the supernatural. So it's the word of God. Okay, and verse 3 says, All things were made by him, and without him was not made anything which was made. So the same thing today, God will not produce anything in the earth without his word. The word of God. Of the supernatural, the word of God. That's the first foundation. The second foundation. It's communion with God. In other words, you are not looking out to produce something on your own. It is as you hear, all right, you judge. Jesus says the Son of Man can do nothing of his own accord, okay, of himself. John chapter 5, I think, verse 18, verse 19. He says, but that which I see the Father do, that I do. Are we together? That's the place of communion with God. Communion with God. Jesus, Jesus did not heal every sick person on the earth. Okay, whatever Jesus saw the Father did, that's what he did. Of course, he expressed the compassion of the Father too, all right, as the character of God. In other words, there was nobody in the scriptures that asked Jesus for help and Jesus neglected, or Jesus declined. There was nobody who asked for mercy that Jesus declined. 
Do you understand that now? Jesus did good everywhere. But the doing of Jesus' good was subject to the approval of the Father. Are we together now? It's very important. So we must remain in consistent communion. And that's why I said, when a desire comes into your heart, okay? When a desire comes to your heart, God gives dreams to his children. In the last days, I'll pour out of my spirit, I'll pour out my spirit upon all flesh. The young men, all right, they, and young men, they shall see visions. Visions. God gives visions to people. All visions are not selfish. It's not all visions that are selfish. It's not all visions that are from the devil. When you have a vision, okay, it is not demonic. Take that vision. Don't run with it yet. Take that vision. Take it to God. Clarify the vision. Oh God, this thing has been locking in my mind for a while. Did you put it there? What's this thing about? Clarify it. In the process of clarifying it, you will discover purpose. God will show you why the vision, the purpose for the vision. Are we together now? Because let me not go into that because of time. Are you with me now? Are you blessed so far? Because this is very important. So God is going to clarify it, okay? And then God will give you substance for that vision, okay? Through his word, through the, the you know, rhema word, from the written word of God and the thoughts of the scriptures, all right, God will speak to you. He will speak to you on that matter from a verse or a passage of the Bible, and that is the substance for your vision. Okay, and that's what you're going to keep in your mind. That's what you're going to keep in your heart. Hallelujah. So communion with God by the Holy Spirit as a second foundation. So I said this, the supernatural is being fruitful. Being supernatural is being fruitful. Okay, so in Genesis chapter 1 verse 26, what does being fruitful mean? Fruitfulness does not mean MRBC, give birth. No, that's physical. Okay, it says physical fruitfulness, but we are not physical beings primarily, we are spiritual beings primarily. Our essence, our reality is in the realm of the spirit. Are we together now? So when God says be fruitful, he wasn't merely talking about physical fruitfulness, he was talking about all-round fruitfulness, in other words, produce according to potential. If you are not producing at the level of your potential, you are not being fruitful. Are we together now? Okay, so when it says produce according to the level of your potential, you are my image, so produce what you see me do. Speak what you hear me say. That's why Hospital 4, I think verse 10 says, if any man speak, let him speak as an oracle of God. I like a version that says, let him speak as go God, as though God himself were talking. Do you understand that now? Let him speak as like, do you understand now? That is being fruitful. In other words, you are writing. Through your writing, you can be supernatural because you are speaking the words of God, all right, in, in print. That's being supernatural. Amen. Glory to God. And the supernatural always, you know, as it says that wisdom is justified of its children. When people read what you have written, that, is, that will show you whether what you wrote is supernatural or not because we will see the effects because the words of god they are alive he can raise the dead are we together okay he can do you get that okay let's just move on for time's sake so in genesis chapter 1 verse 26 and elohim said let us make man in our own image after our likeness so we are in the image of god and then verse 28 says be fruitful god blessed them and god said be fruitful now, you will see the word be, you can put it in quotes or write down. It is, it says be, that's a nature that produces. Be. You see, when you become right, you will produce right. You will do right. And that's what I was trying to say the other time. If you are supernatural to do the supernatural. If you are not supernatural, you cannot do supernatural. So the emphasis here is on the nature. We must be converted. So the process of working out the supernatural is not a mechanical process that leaves us unchanged, that leaves us the way we were. Every time we practice the supernatural, it must change us. All right? It must renew us. 
you know, because we are eventually, at the end of the day, we are reprogramming our minds, we are reprogramming our internal conditions according to God, according to the word of God, the logos of God, the logic of God. So the journey in the supernatural is the journey in transformation. Are we together now? You see, if we teach the supernatural only in light of performing miracles, it is an, it is an, um, It is an incomplete, all right? It's an incomplete teaching. It is not the entire counsel of God. The teaching on the supernatural must include the transformation of the men because God's method is not just, particularly in the, in the context of the New Testament, my teaching is in the context of the New Testament, okay? Particularly for, for in the New Testament, this dispensation, uh, God God's method in the New Testament is not to, just be doing stuff on the external without us changing. God will change us first for us to change the situation. God will rewrite the laws of our hearts first. He will change our internal configurations. He will change our internal programming, and then we will change the external. Amen? So this is very important. We have to understand the place of the NATO. Okay? So I want to emphasize this, and then I'll continue on, you know, this be fruitful. I just want to say this as a digression. The assignment of order and structure is to the atmosphere. Don't forget that. So from the beginning to the end of operating the supernatural, you have to have order in place, structures in place, so that you can, you know, help the atmosphere. The atmosphere is the womb for the supernatural. When the atmosphere is wrong, you cannot experience the supernatural. It will be extremely difficult to experience supernatural. All right? The atmosphere, when Jesus went, Jesus went to his hometown, the atmosphere was filled with unbelief. Okay? And the Bible tells us that he could there do no mighty works. Okay? Are we together now? All right. It's very important. Order. So the, atmos the, the atmosphere or order is not what powers supernatural. What powers the supernatural is who you have become by revelation. So it is your becoming, all right? That is your that is the strength. Your becoming is the strength, all right, of your supernatural. Or of your supernatural experiences or your supernatural life. So let's get back to what I was talking about, all right? And I'll now move on to the second part. Once I go through that, I'll move on to the second part of uh, today's teaching. Okay. Now in Psalms chapter 1 and verse 1, verse 3. Psalms 1 from verse 1 to 3. I'm, I'm sure you know that scripture, but let's have it on the, uh, in, in, the, in the comment section. It says, Blessed is the man that walks not in the castle of the ungodly, nor stands in the way of sinner, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. He said, But is the light is in the law of the Lord. Now, don't forget this. We're looking at what is the process of now being fruitful. Okay? Is the light is in the law of the Lord. On his law does he meditate day and night. So you receive the word, you receive the law, you receive the substance, and what you do with it is you meditate on it. Okay? Day and night. Now, the result of it, so, you know, everything God said in Genesis chapter 1 is God said this in his reality. But what we find in Genesis chapter 2 is the explanation of how Genesis chapter 1 came to pass. Are we together now? So in chapter 1, God called forth the grasses, the trees, and the fruits, called everything forth. God created man, Genesis chapter 1. In chapter 2, we found that that process, God actually formed man first. And then God breathed into him, you know, into his nursery breath of life. In ch chapter 2, we found out that actually oh, all the trees did not just grow like that in the first day. Okay? God planted the seeds there with his mouth. That's why I said God operates the seed principle, not the fruit principle. God operates the seed principle. So the seeds were there. But the process of time, God had to make man first. Man had to come before the trees can grow. Because it says there was no man to till the ground. So even God did not even cause the rain to fall. Dew just came from heaven. Dew just came from heaven to water the ground. 
So chapter two, you see the process, the formation, how it now happened within the earth, all right? Given the, the elements of nature, time, space, you know, matter, and all of that coming together to participate, to form what God has, you know, declared in his realm. Are you following what I'm talking about now? And that same way, in our being fruitful, when God said, be fruitful, in chapter 1, verse 28, the process of being fruitful in our Christian work, there's a process to it. It does not just happen like that. No, 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 no. You have to go through meditation. Meditation now is now how you now rewrite, all right, your internal condition to mirror what God has said. And when you reprogram your internal condition to mirror what God has said, then you will have, all right, an external outcome that reflects both of them. That's how to be fruitful in the earth. Okay? So he says it shall be like a tree. So he will become it. The process of becoming is through meditation. That's why the supernatural does not leave us unchanged. It does not leave us unchanged. It, it takes us through a transformational journey. All right? Through metamorphosis. Like the butterfly, you will start with you know the egg and then you hatch, you know, the lava, and then you keep developing, developing until you become a butterfly. There's metamorphosis. All right, there is a transformation through it. Okay, anyone who promises the supernatural without transformation, anyone who it, it, it's it's not that's not the divine order, that's not sound teaching. That's not sound doctrine because it's not complete. There has to be the transformation of the people. That's why the Bible tells us that faith works by love. There has to be a change within. Your love level will increase. Your patience will increase. Your long-suffering endurance will increase. It's all in the process of the supernatural. You take out these things from the supernatural, it's not correct. It's not complete. Okay? So he will bring forth fruits in a season. He says, his leaves also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. This is how to be fruitful in anything you do. Just pursue maturity in Christ. Pursue transformation in Christ. All right. What, is, what does your love work look like? Are we together? Sorry about that. What does your love work look like? Your patience level, your meekness and humility. Your peace, faithfulness, integrity, all right? As we experience, all right, and as we push for the supernatural, we will be corrected. We will be reprogrammed, all right, in the light of these things. Okay? Hallelujah forever. Glory to God forever. Glory to God. Okay? Now, look at Deuteronomy chapter 30 and verse... Um, sorry about that. Um, Deuteronomy chapter 30 and from verse 12 to 14. I won't go there because of time. Now it's, it shows us, you know, it's a, that's what Apostle Paul was quoting in Romans chapter 10. And it says, the word is not far from you. It is in your mouth, even in your heart, so that you can do it. Are we together now? Are you, are you following what I'm saying? So the way to meditate is that you put that substance, all right, in your mouth. In the context of your life, your reality. Do you understand now? So say, for instance, for healing, he says, Father, I thank you because by your stripes I am healed. In fact, I was healed 2,000 years ago when Jesus was beaten. By its stripes that he was beaten, I was healed. Every dimension of sickness was removed from me. Therefore, I no longer have them. For they are already taken away from me. Now you are meditating. You are thinking about it and you are speaking it. And that is the practical way, all right, to rewrite what you are seeing in your mind. And when you do that consistently, all right, you will find out, all right, that at some point, if you need to take any action, you will know just what action to take in obedience to God. So look at Joshua chapter 1 and verse 8. Joshua chapter 1 verse 8 now it says this this book of the law shall not depart out of thy where 
is he this, does it say your mind <laughs> it says your mouth your mouth that's the process it says but thou shalt meditate there and day and night that thou mayest observe to do so the purpose of meditation is to bring us to a state of mind where we are ready to act on the word okay so you have meditated on yourself being patient being kind it is to position you for the practice of being kind Okay, so that you can observe to do according to what God has given to you as a substance. He says, for then you shall make your way prosperous and then you shall have good success. Hallelujah forevermore. So that's the way to be fruitful. Okay, you take the substance of the fruit, which is a seed, and then you plant the substance in your heart through your mouth. And then you set yourself up for external fruitfulness. So that what I've just described is the law of conversion by meditation. Now, last time I began to introduce to you the law of manifestation, and I said it is practically through two things, joyful thanksgiving and obedience. Joyful thanksgiving and obedience. When you want to manifest out, all right, having done the conversion, now, joy is produced by meditation. Joy is produced by, medita by meditation. In Jeremiah chapter, chapter 15 and verse 16, Jeremiah 15 and verse 16, and it says, Thy words were found, and I did eat them. All right? Thy words were unto me the joy and rejoicing of my heart. You see that now. So by meditating on the word of God that God has given to you on any subject matter or any, you know, any reality right, that you want to manifest as a supernatural in that sense now, as you read, as you, as you, as you meditate on it, it will produce joy in your heart. Now you now release that joy through singing. You release, joy must be released. Joy is not stored up. Faith is not stored up. Faith must be released. Okay. Uh -huh. So, so as that joy is coming forth, you release it out through singing, you release it out through dancing, you release it out through shouting, you release it out through laughing. Are we together? Okay. So, as you plant the word, which is a substance, through meditation, joy comes, but it is not time for outward expression. I told you the other time, it's not time for outward expression. In the operations of the supernatural, it's not time for outward expression. You know, just rejoice at it. Rejoice at the word. All right? Rejoice at the word. Glory to God. So you rejoice. You give thanks. Okay? And as you do this, it will bring you to a place of meekness. All right? Please give me a moment. Please. All right. Thank you very much. Sorry about that. Now, so the, that, that's the process. So you begin to rejoice. You begin to give thanks. Okay? And then it will bring you to a place of meekness where you can endure unto salvation. A proud person cannot endure. Hallelujah. Mm -mm. Endurance is not a fruit of proud people, okay? Endurance comes from a place of meekness where you are submitted to God. Now, the way you become submitted to God in meekness, all right, is through thanksgiving. Thanksgiving works meekness in us. In other words, you recognize that I cannot do this by myself, okay? Of my own self, I cannot achieve this. It's very important. Sorry about that. All right. 
Now, to become fruitful, please write it down. To become fruitful, endurance through fire is compulsory. We looked at that the other time. Okay? Endurance through fire is compulsory. Trials, tribulations, persecution, which can lead to offenses. Amen. It's very important. Endurance through fire is compulsory. Trials, tribulations, persecutions, which can lead to offenses. Now, look at the, the, um, the account in Mark. Mark chapter number 4 and verse 16. Quickly, quickly, quickly. Mark 4 and verse 16. He says, And these are they likewise, which are sown on stony ground, who, when they have heard the word, immediately receive it with gladness, and have no root in themselves, and so endure but for a time. Afterward, when affliction or persecution ariseth, okay, for the word's sake, you see it again, is they come for the word. It's because of the substance. If you don't have the substance, they won't come. <laughs> so the proof that someone is, you know, or you are getting bad boost is because you have substance. But there must be endurance through it. Okay, now in the process of this, there's high probability for offense, but you must not be offended. You must, through joy, joy is the only antidote for offense. Joy. And you keep your joy level high. So when we say that to become fruitful, endurance through fire is compulsory, this is the halter. So you remember the key halter. That's why it's important. Uh, I'm trying to draw a single straight line through all of these keys so that you can see it in a whole. That's the halter. Now, what is the halter? What is the halter? The wood is the word of God. You are the sacrifice, the living sacrifice to be offered. Now, you are laid on the wood because your life is resting on the wood. Your result is dependent on the wood, which is the substance, which is the word. Now, fire must be applied to the wood. Are you following what I'm saying? Fire must be applied to the wood all right, that you are standing on, okay? The wood is, so it's, it's your response to the fire that is coming for your wood that will determine whether you experience the supernatural or not. But the way you can go through that process properly and successfully is joy, praises to God, no complaining, no murmuring, thanksgiving. Are you following what I'm saying now? It's very important. So the fire is applied through the word to you. Okay? It's coming for your faith. It's coming for you. But it's through the word. Hallelujah forevermore. It's very important. So every time you have an experience of fire, that is the opportunity for the supernatural. Very important. But the key is to keep your meditation. All right? Keep your meditation. That image must not leave your mind. No matter what you're going through, the image must stay there. Keep your meditation, your mouth locked on reprogramming your heart. Keep your mouth on it. Okay? And then keep your confession. Do you get now? It's the same thing anyway. Keep your confession. Keep it locked. As well, it says in Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 10, let us therefore hold fast our profession. And it says, for God is faithful. God is faithful. Hebrews 10 verse 23. Look at this. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering. The word profession there is the same word confession. To profess what you believe. To say it out. Do you understand? To confess what you believe. You say it out. So, so we hold fast our confession without wavering. It says, for he is faithful that promised. That promise you have, that substance you have, hold on to it. It says, let it not slip out of you, out of your hand at any point in time. It's very important. Please pay attention to these principles. So you give thanks through it as you hold on to it. You give thanks through it. It says, count it all joy when you go through diverse kinds of affliction, situations trials temptations persecution all right he says 
your 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 faith is being tried and the trial of our faith apostle peter helps us understand it well he says it is it is it is much precious than gold okay pay attention to that so we have to thank god regardless of external happenings these are the keys all right to the supernatural habakkuk look at habakkuk chapter 3 habakkuk 3 Habakkuk uh, 3, and look at verse uh, verse 17. It says, although the fig tree shall not blossom, neither, sh shall, neither shall fruit be in the vines. In other words, I'm not yet seeing external results. It says, the labor of the holy shall fail, and the field shall yield no meat. The flock shall be cut off from the food, and there shall be no herd in the, herd in the stores. Verse 18, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. The Lord God is my strength. You see confession now. Are you together now? So you mix your joy, all right, with what you're saying. He says, the Lord God is my strength. He will make my feet like hands feet, and it will make me to walk upon my high places, all right? And he says to the chief singer on my stringed instrument. So you see, he was doing that. On his instrument do you know you are sing you are releasing all of those things to god in the midst of it okay this is extremely important okay so i hope you took note of that principle so you thank him regardless of external happenings all right now as you begin to thank god as we begin to thank God, your eyes are hoping to see, and that's where we enter into today's, don't worry, I'm almost done with my teaching. That's where we enter into today's message, which is the place of obedience. Now, as you thank God, because this is the law of manifestation, as you thank God for the substance and for the, the manifestation, okay, your eyes will be hoping to see what you should do. This is the final stage. Now, sometimes you don't need to you don't need to do anything. All right. We talked to we talked about that last time. Sometimes as you switch into Thanksgiving, God will just begin to do his own stuff. All right. Through angels, he will just release angels. You know, everything will just begin to you know work and you see the supernatural. But there are situations where we have to act, all right, where we have to do something. Okay. So as you give God thanks, you begin to have ideas of what to do. All right, you begin to have instructions. Okay, do this. Okay, do that. Oh, talk to this person. All right, enroll for this course. All right, uh, you start your master's. Oh, apply for this job. Oh, talk to social person. You may get a scholarship. Do you understand that? Very, very, you know, these things are very, very important principles. So God will open your eyes to see the work you should do. Remember that it says that the, the, he said, this is not the hearers. It says we should not be hearers only, but the doers of the work, right? And it says that person is blessed in all his deeds. It's the doer that is blessed in all his deeds. It says, blessed is the man, um, uh, Psalms 1. It says, he shall be like a tree, planted by rivers of water, bring out his fruit in the season. It says, and um, everything he does, whatsoever he doeth, shall prosper. You see that now. If earlier on, it says, that uh, he's delighted to meditate upon the law of the Lord. On his law does he meditate on day and night? And he says, meditation is what leads. So the end point of faith is what you need to do. But you don't do things that you have not seen. I'm, I'm going to get there shortly. Okay. So during Thanksgiving is where your eyes is open to see. Romans chapter 1, quickly please. I'm going to borrow additional 6-7 minutes. Romans chapter 1 and verse 18. It says, For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. All right. It says, Because that, that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God hath showed it unto them, for the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood 
by the things which are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. It says, because that when they, glory, when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. In other words, their unthankfulness led to the darkness of their heart. Every time people operate in entitlement, all right, um, ungratefulness, or let's say ingratitude, what happens is they begin to experience darkness in their hearts. Thanksgiving opens our hearts up for vision. Grateful people are visionaries. Grateful people are visionaries. Grateful people are visionaries. It is very easy to see when you are grateful. Two keys to consistent sight. Be grateful. Avoid offenses. Two keys to consistent sight. Whether it's inside, inside, foresight, every kind of sight, error sight, all right? Whatever sight, okay? Thanksgiving, gratitude, and what? You avoid offenses, okay? So that's just by the way. Let me give you another scripture to corroborate this point. Look at, in, in Isaiah chapter 38, I'm going to rush through this because of our time. Isaiah 38 is the story of Ezekiah. You guys know that story. Ezekiah was a guy, I mean, I don't want to say what came to my mind. He was a very funny king who, who did a very a very foolish act. All right, but let's leave, let's leave him, okay, to what happened to him. So at some point, God said, you know, he was going to die. God sent the prophet Isaiah to him and told him, guy, set your house in order, you're going to die, and you won't leave. And then Ezekiah turned to the Lord and prayed to the Lord. And then at some point, right, he sent the, 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 uh, the prophet back, prophet back to him. Look at this. Um, in, I'm sure you know the story now. Uh, verse 5, go and say to Ezekiah, thus saith the Lord, the God of thy father, um, thy David father, I have heard thy prayer, I have seen thy tears, behold, I will add unto you unto your days 15 years. Now, Ezekiah was, was bedridden. He was so sick unto death. Are we together now? Okay. Now, so what was the key? What was the key to getting him out of that situation? Number one, he prayed, right? The communion, right? And then he was able to secure substance. Okay. And God told him, okay, you're going to have 15 more years. Now, even though he had the substance, there is something that will lead to the external manifestation. Now, look at this. He began to speak. Um, look at uh, verse 9. The writing of Ezekiah, king of Judah, when he had been sick and was required, recovered of his sickness. So he was writing about what he did that brought him out of that you know, place. So that I said in the coffin, uh, cutting off my, of my days, I shall go to the gates of grave. I am deprived of the rest of the In other words, he said he gave up. All right? Now look at this. Um, I'm trying to jump because of time. Uh, look at this. Verse 16. O oh Lord, by these things men live, and in all these things is the life of my spirit. So will thou recover me and make me to live. So he started, he put it on his mouth. Okay? Behold, so he put the word on his mouth. Behold, for peace I had great bitterness, but thou hast in love to my soul delivered it from the pit of corruption, for thou hast cast all my sins behind my back. So he, he began to mix what God gave to him with his context, with his condition. And he began to say to, he began to praise God. He says, for the grave, verse 18, for the grave cannot praise thee. Death cannot celebrate thee. They that go down to the pit cannot hope for thy truth. He began to thank God. He began to praise God. He says, the living, the living shall he shall praise thee as I do this day. Okay? The father to the children shall make known thy truth. The Lord was ready to save me. Therefore, we will sing all right, my songs to the string instruments all the days of our lives in the house of the Lord. All right? He says, for Isaiah had said. So that, that experience of praise and gratitude opened up the, the, the specific action to take. Isaiah said, let them take a lump of figs and lay it for a plaster upon the boil and it shall recover. 
Are we together now? This is very important. Okay? So as you praise, God will open up, all right, what you need to do. Again, I want to refer everyone to the teaching or the training on the nuclear power of thanksgiving. The nuclear power of thanksgiving is very important. Go on, I don't want to reteach that. Okay? Just go listen to that. So there is a work to do that leads to fruitfulness. There is a work to do that leads to fruitfulness. Fruitfulness is not automatic, like Genesis chapter 1. There's a process, as is in chapter 2. Some things, and you understand that work. Okay, but eventually, the, the work you're going to do externally, all right, is not something that you're going to cook out, cook by yourself. It's something that has to be revealed by God. Okay, so God will show you what you should do. Okay, and it could be a leap of faith it's not even good most of that it would be a leap of faith sometimes it could also be ridiculous for instance look at Naaman. the prophet told Naaman, go and wash there as the action if he did not do it forget about it in other words you could have been meditating you could have been doing many stuff your internal is there all right and then god gives instructions write this book okay god gives instructions Oh, speak to this person. God gives instructions, you know, pray for this person. You've seen visions of yourself healing the sick and all that. So God tells you, okay, so go and heal the sick, all right? If you're afraid, if you're not confident, if you're not bold and courageous, you will not have that expression because there, that is the work to be done. So it could be ridiculous. It could also even be like, you know, Peter, Peter's case. Peter had been laboring all night. He didn't catch anything the same river then jesus spoke one more time and said that same thing you've been doing that was not working now i want you to retry it again do it again right and peter said i've been doing the same thing it doesn't it, it, it did not work are you sure this thing's going do you understand but you obey and that's what we're talking about obedience you obey that you obey whatever god asks you to do and you do just that and you see the power of God release. You see the wisdom of God release. You see the supernatural come to play. All right? Because it has gone through its due process. Okay? This is very important. Now, let me say at this point, as I begin to close, that it is not just about physical actions, all right, but also stillness. So obedience is not just about physical action. Oh, you must do this, you must do that. Obedience is also about stillness. It's about stillness, rather. In other words, sometimes God will just tell you not to do anything. Sometimes God can tell you, wait. Okay? Sometimes God can tell you, don't do anything. It's very important. It's obedience. So whatever it tells you, that's what you want to do. The key is to do whatever it tells you. It does not have to be physical activity. <clears throat> okay? So faith is obedience to God, believing that he will do what he has committed himself to do through his word. You believe him. All right? If he asks you to do anything, you do it. Obedience, it's a work of obedience. It's a work of obedience. Okay? And that's where you can see the power of God released regarding that substance. Because now God now tells you, he gives you an instruction, Go and start this thing. And I, I sense in my spirit that there are some of us here that we have things that God has placed in our hearts to do. All right? That are pivotal, or let me say pivotal now, to our, our exp expression of the supernatural. In other words, that which God wants to give birth, all right, through you into the earth. Instructions. Go and do that. You've been meditating over it. You've been meditating over it. It's been in your heart. But you have not. He has given you instructions. Now, it's not you trying to launch out ahead of time where you've not, you know, kept your joy level up, built your endurance and all that. No, that's what I'm talking about. You've been doing all of that. And God has given you, go ahead. Go and do this. But you've been stalling. You didn't do it. And I speak to you in the name of Jesus. Strength. Receive strength to go ahead and do it right now in the name of Jesus. Receive grace and courage to step out into the unknown in the name of Jesus. Receive grace to take that giant leap, that quantum leap in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Glory to God.
It's very important. Okay. So obedience is what unlocks the supernatural. We don't have time. I'm going to close now. I wanted to show you examples, but let me just give you the examples and you can take a look at that yourself. At the wedding at Cana, I wanted us to actually study through it. The wedding at Cana, John chapter 2, verse 1 to 9. John 2, 1 to 9. The mother said to them, whatsoever it tells you, do it. It does not make sense. Water does not become wine naturally, but if God says you should do it, do it. In fact, there are, there are even cases where your spiritual parents, or oversights, or mentors may not even understand that thing. All right? Just double check that is God. All right? And judge it with scriptures too. Particularly if you've been following this, judge it with scriptures, judge it with the witness of the Spirit, subject it to, to time. Okay, so when your spiritual parents are not in, in, in alignment to something you believe God is doing, all right? Subject it to time. Okay? Subject it to the test of the scriptures and you know, the flow and the thoughts of the scriptures and subject it to the witness of the spirit. Those are three ways to judge. Are we together? It's very important because it's not all the times that only your spiritual parents will understand. Okay? So there are sometimes it's very scarce. It's very scarce, but it's a possibility. Okay? So at wedding at Cana, that happened. What I was done to wine. Just do whatever it tells you to do. Also, Joshua. Joshua and the wall of Jericho with the Israelites. If you look at Hebrews 11 and verse 30, it says, By faith, the walls of Jericho were brought down. Joshua chapter 6, Joshua 6 from verse 3 to verse 20, God told them, go round. Nobody goes to battle looking around, you know, the fortress. They will shoot you down with arrows. Are we together now? Nobody goes round, you know, the entire people going around not even soldiers that have shields are you following what i'm saying now instructions you obey that instruction all right and then they shouted as god had commanded them to do all right and it's as it's, as um balaam was saying in numbers numbers 23 verse 21 he says the shout of the king is amongst them the shout of the king is among them they released the shout of the king joyfully Acting on the word of God, the instruction of God, and the walls came down. Heavenly, heavenly bombs, C fours, were already there. Spiritual C four bombs were there. The walls, everything came down, and they had a victory. Okay, they would have had a lot of casualty trying to breach the walls. So there are times where we want to, we are trying to use human methods, we're trying to use methods we've seen in TV, methods we've seen in the lives of our mentors, methods we've seen from our friends. We want to do what others have done. No, ask God, God, what do I do? What do I do? And once you do what you need to do, what God wants you to do, the supernatural will be, you'll be it will just be fully unlocked. All right, and that's the law of manifestation. In Psalms 47, it also talks about that too, the place of the shout. It says, blessed are those who know the joyful sound. It talks about also the shout of the king right, in Psalms chapter 47. The third example I wanted us to go through all right, is the crossing of the Red Sea. The crossing of the Red Sea. It's simple instructions. In Exodus chapter 14 from verse 15 to verse 22, Exodus 14, verse 15 to verse 22, God told Moses, Moses, why are you talking to me? Tell the people to go forward. Go forward. Simple instructions. They could see Red Sea in front. The, 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 the Egyptians, Pharaoh and, you know, Pharaoh and, and his you know, choicest men uh, behind, the, behind the scene. Oh, sorry about that. Pharaoh and, 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 his, and, his, and his men you know, behind the scene and God told them simple instructions, all right? Forge ahead, move ahead. Are you following what I'm saying now? Okay, instructions, follow instructions. This is very important, okay? So when we talk about obedience, obedience can mean do this, all right? It can be, you know, reach out to this person. But obedience can also mean wait. Uh, give me a moment, please.
Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. All right. So obedience, obedience can mean act. Speak to this person. Go and do this. But obedience can also mean wait. So if God says on this issue, just hold on. I'm settling it. I'm going to sort it. Don't do anything. If you try doing anything, all right, you are disrupting all right, the operation of angels. And I thought I was going to be able to touch on the ministry of angels in the supernatural. It's very important. I've talked about this before, or maybe in the future we'll go deeper into all right, uh, the operations of angels. Okay, but God releases angels okay for the supernatural. So when we are in obedience, I'm wrapping up now. When we are in obedience, we need to stand still. We need to take a posture of rest. As in, is in Exodus 14 and verse 13, it says, stand still and you will know that is God. All right. And that's why Hebrews chapter 4 from verse 8 to 11, um, you can take a look at that later on. It says, let us labor so that we can enter into his rest. We labor to enter into his rest. We don't labor to make it happen. We labor to enter into rest. And how do we labor to enter into rest? We go through that process of the laws of conversion and the laws of manifestation okay so you are at rest that god has given you the substance you have rejoiced at it you are thanking god that god is going to do it okay so when you are acting you are acting from a place of rest from a place of stillness and eventually you realize that from the beginning all right paying attention to the word of life communion with god with the holy spirit all right imbibing the seed the substance into your heart reprogramming our hearts to think the thoughts of god and to behave like god and all that so that we can have the same external result and external condition as god or let's say as a reality in god is we realize that obedience is not a destination obedience is a journey all right so walking the supernatural takes us through transformation we have to obey God through everything. It is an attitude that we have to build. It is the key to success in God. It is the key to success in ministry. I can reduce everything in ministry to one single word, obedience. I can reduce everything in life as far as success is concerned to one thing, obedience. The ability to get what is God asking me to do. And you do just that and you step it. I hope you were blessed. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this time. And I ask, oh God, by that, that the power of your spirit, you establish this word in our consciousness in the name of Jesus. I ask that the words have spoken today, that they will mix with faith in the heart of everyone who has heard me tonight. And I ask that they will begin to do the things that are pleasing to you, oh God. They will bear fruits that bring glory to you building the body of Christ and advancing your kingdom in the earth in Jesus mighty name. Amen and amen. Thank you very much for joining us tonight. All right. Uh, God bless you. Um, my announcement to come after. I want us to be able to take questions and comments before we go. All right. Tonight. Sorry for the breaks in transmission. All right. Uh, it took some time. God bless you. So let's see if we can have uh, some questions before we go and comments. All right, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, thank you very much. So just as um, the minister has said, if you have um, questions, if you have comments, please can you um, identify by raising your hand so that you can be called if you have questions, if you have comments from anyone, please, without wasting much time. Amen. All right, so um, Sister Nyola, um, you can ask your question, please. Thank you so much, sir. I've been blessed so far. So without wasting much of our time, so go straight to my question. You said it the other time that at times the Lord pleases us and means people that we need to be for our transformation and this may be because of the 
promise he has given to us. So I want to ask that it's in two contexts. Uh, is it possible that when God places us in one particular environment, can it be for our transformation? Like the reason for the prayer that we are facing, can it be for our transformation? Or if when we are being transformed, and indeed we can see the witness that truly this thing is for my transformation, God really wants to build me up in this way. So, other people that surround us, can we say they are transformed? by we subjecting to the like being obedient to what what has told us to do at times it might be so so very very painful like when god is telling us to do that thing and we eventually did it people in that environment even though they don't speak up can we say they are also transformed by our obedience uh, obedience sir Okay, I mean, that was a very, very powerful comment question, <laughs> right? Because you answered your own question, right? And I, I'm glad you gave a feedback because that shows what God has told you. So that's what you are taking out of this training, all right, in terms of one of the practical things. Yes, and particularly, I think, let me say it at this point, for those that are deployed for NYSE, Okay, one of the period, one of the things that God does in us during that period is to subject us to a condition of pressure. It takes you out of your comfort zone, takes you to another territory. All right. If you take the comfort zone from your house and you take it to that territory, you will come out of that season without transformation and you have wasted the wilderness. The purpose of the wilderness, that pressure the Israelites had, was not to destroy them. It was to prove the word. It was to teach them that they are supposed to live by the word. Okay? Not by bread alone. Are we together now? So, yes. Okay? God can bring you into spaces, right, where he wants to use people to, to refine our character to transform us and yes it does that right of course they are operating in the flesh but god's perspective of it is not that they are wicked towards you god's perspective of it is that it's opportunity for you to evolve all right into who you are supposed to be so you see that way and the second thing you said is that when you live a life of obedience you become a pattern and that's correct that's the truth. You see, that's why it says we should be followers of them who through faith and patience have obtained the inheritance when the obedience is complete. Are we together? Is, this, is, this is the way it is. All right. So there's no way. When you live a life of obedience to God, all right, your life will be different because you live a transformed life and you will become a pattern for people. Yes. And that's what we find in, in, in the, 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 the all of faith. Let's not see all of it. All of it. So that was a very, very great question. God, God bless you, sis. God bless you. Yes, I think I, I, I was able to respond to that, right? Yes, I have done that. Thanks so much, sir. Yes. Um, all right, sir. Um, bro, Peter, sir, we can quickly have you, sir. Th thank you, thank you, thank you very much for tonight, sir. Um, of course, this is a question I, I thought I was I wanted to restrain from asking because I was like I felt maybe you've answered it, but I was I was distracted a bit during the meeting, so but I still want to ask anyway because something I've just discovered is I think maybe in the next two weeks we're going to have another training and sometimes you are trying to catch up on what you did last, trying to even maybe you are not around. You're trying to listen to the message, you're trying to write these things on, and you're trying to see how you can apply them. But I, I, how do you think you can? Because I just say that life just, these things just keep going. As life just continues, even when you go for lectures, 
you have to look for another one next week. And these things we just keep doing. And you just see that even maybe you don't want to miss a lecture. I'm just using a student, a student as an example. In two weeks, you just see that you missed like three or four days. I'm like, wow, I didn't plan for. So I'm like, for our training, for these things that we're learning, how, how do I make sure I apply them? That even when I'm trying to apply them, another one comes. Uh, how do I make sure I, I don't? I hope you get what I'm saying so that I'm like, okay, I'm trying to learn this. I'm trying to, maybe I've learned this and I didn't, I didn't apply it. I found out I didn't apply it. Another training is coming again. How can I, how can I get people to apply these things? I don't want to carry another training over. As maybe I missed one training, I'm finding time to, I want to find time to listen and free. And this is, my life just goes on like that. And so what, what, what counsel do you have for? Maybe me, just me. But how do we make sure that we don't try to fix things up? Okay. Because I'm one of the things I've also learned to is applying immediately is one of the things I'm really up to. Once you don't apply immediately, it's really things in my house that come up. So I hope you get my question, sir. All right. Yes, I got your question. Um, and what you're saying is correct. It's not even just for Kiba and I trainees, it's also the same for for um even messages, right? Church messages and all that. I want to say two things. <clears throat> the first and the most primary one is the law of conversion. You cannot do what you have not been programmed with. Okay? In other words, it will be mechanical rather than being organic. Okay? So you have to prioritize. That's why you have to Trust God and pray to God to reveal your primary teachers to you. If you don't have primary teachers and you're hitting from everywhere, you are likely going to be fruitful in the application of the word of God because it takes time and it takes systematic building for saints and believers to be built. Do you understand this now? Okay. So if you submit yourself, for instance, to teachings or training KBR and I, all right, it's a body. They are connected and it's layer upon layer upon layer upon layer upon layer. And what the minister of God is doing is to help you build a mental model, an internal condition, an internal reprogramming. Okay, so when you don't attend trainings or or you are not concentrating during trainings, or let's assume that you couldn't attend or you couldn't participate fully, you go back to it. The long or short what of what I'm saying is this. Teachings help us to build mental models around the logic of God, the logos of God. Okay, that's the ministry of ministers. Do you understand that now? Okay, and it takes concentration for you to be able to do that. Okay, so you go back to the teachings, you release in through your notes. Okay, did I get this right? Did I get this right? You write it. What's the message? Do you understand? Because every message is a journey. It's like a story. It's stepwise. It's all connected together. Do you understand? So when you listen to a message, you have to listen to it holistically. You have to follow the line of the thoughts of the minister. It's intentional. Anywhere a minister starts is intentional. Okay? But the key, one of the key to that is that you cannot have too many teachers. You can't have, you can't have too many teachers. Okay, You cannot be built up that way. I'm not saying you will not learn from others, but your primary okay. And then if you have questions, you ask them questions. Okay. Now, when you receive teachings, it's not for immediate application. You have to meditate on it. You have to write them on your heart. In other words, how does this thing affect my life? You have to think about it. That's your own work. That's not my own work or the preacher's work. You have to take the teaching, all right? How is this thing applicable to what I'm currently going through? And then you begin to tailor the teaching to what you're currently, currently, currently going through. And again, you rejoice at it. You give God thanks for it. Do you understand? That's why we say it's like table manner. When you eat, you say thank you to those who feed you. Do you understand? You it's it. You have to be grateful about. It. It's part of it. It's the same thing also spiritual, spiritual. That's why Paul said that if we communicated to you spiritual things, it is expected. We should not have to ask you that you communicate. All right, it wasn't your canal things. That's Thanksgiving. 
Do you understand? In other words, is 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 it's illegal? It is immaturity to feed from a source without giving back to that source. Okay, but that's a digression. All right. So gratitude is very important to it in the practice. And as you give God thanks for that word, you will know how to apply it. Do you understand? But you cannot apply what is not already in your heart. You have to get the message into your heart. And that one is true diligence. Okay? You have to be diligent. You stay with the word. It says, as unto a light until the day dawn. First Peter. You stay unto it. The word, word that you receive, you stay with it. Okay? And the second one I was talking about the other time. Uh, ah, did I forget this? Uh, I think I've been able to cover it. I think I'm able to cover it. Okay? But there were two things I wanted to talk about, but I, I think I probably, probably skipped my mic. Maybe it's not for you. Okay? Uh, was I able to respond to that? Yeah, yes, sir. Thank you, sir. And I think you, you touched a bit on one of that question I've had on my mind for, I think, months or years. But I'm not sure I've been able to ask anyone before that. I've just discovered too that as a believer too that there's a place of being systematically and is it methodically taught that I think maybe there was a time in my Christian experience too maybe I was listening to too many, many messages and I wanted to grow there was that zeal but I, I, I at the end I saw that of course I I was hearing many things but at the same time it wasn't it wasn't it wasn't I wasn't growing as such I knew too many things I had I, I was listening to many messages and I just knew that there was some there was a place of having a primary teacher and being systematically taught to to grow and become who God wants me to be so I yes. realized you also touched that touched on on, on that too yes yes, yes so, so I remember what I wanted to say. thank you for bringing that up all right so um two things I want to say so when you are listening to him, that's why you don't attend a word meeting without praying, your own private prayers. In other words, you pray, God, as I'm going to this meeting, send your word to me. That word is Rhema word that you can act on. A word that you can, you know, take into your, your conscious, your subconscious now, meditate on you as a substance and that you can act on. So there's a practice that I have when I attend conferences. Before I attend, I pray extensively before I attend any meeting or conference. All right. And then I have a separate place. I have, I write my notes from what I'm learning, but I also write notes from what I hear from God. So as I'm listening to the word of God, the moment the Holy Spirit begins to give me instructions as to what to do, what to change, I have a separate page within that same, you know, area. I scribble out tiny. Number one, I need to do this. Number two, I need to do this. So immediately from each message, I have action points. Do you understand? So every time you listen to a message, you have to be attentive. All right? The Holy Spirit will speak to you what you should do to catch up on the, the, the seed of that message. Okay? And the way you do that is you quickly write it down. Do this. Number two, do that. Number three, do that. Okay, now, this, the other thing I wanted to say Okay, is uh, ah, forgotten again. <laughs> okay, so okay, let's just let me just narrow down that the primary teachers is very important, all right, for you to have uh, primary primary teachers, all right. I think let's just um, leave it. Do we have any other comments? Okay, any comment or question? Okay, I'm sure we can take others in the um. In the community now i have an announcement